Today we're gonna deal with the water. We've gotta take water from that culvert up there and route it all the way around here to the end of our property. And we gotta make sure that we have consistent fall. We're first gonna till the high spots. Then we're gonna use the laser box blade to make sure that we have a consistent grade and that water can flow smoothly. Let's get started. We've had our laser out and we took measurements with the stick starting at a zero point up at the culvert and then just measuring our existing grade all the way around. We've written that down on this paper that you can see and I'm looking at here just to kind of indicate how much either needs to be cut or in some cases filled to make this work. And what I'm seeing is a hump right up here next to the road just after the culvert, right? And then I see that it begins to start draining pretty good here to my left. And then we see another hump on down the way. So we're going to till those areas that appear to have a hump in them before I ever get started with the grader blade and then uh, see how this works out. From what I'm seeing, two tenths of a foot, what is that, three inches, that's the, the most we need to move, at least in a lot of this. So I, I don't think there's going to be nearly as much dirt moving as what there was when we uh, worked at the church camp uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm excited about that. But on the other hand, this is a great opportunity for that laser box blade. And it's actually the reason we got it, because we have very little slope. We have uh, less than two feet slope for this entire path. It looks a little lower out there, but we want this is where we want it to be, or where I want it to be. Yeah. 406 feet, and actually I may have cut the corner a little bit too sharp up here, so it might be 410 feet, maybe even a little more, but the problem is, is we only have 1.85 foot of drop. That's nowhere near 1% slope, so we're gonna have to make sure that we have this right on to be able to get water to flow off of it quickly without just standing in the grass. I've got the laser set up now and put the slope in it that we calculated there. And where I'm at here is the first place that the surface actually hits the desired grade. Everything between here is a hump. So I'm gonna take that hump, I'm gonna till that between there and here, and then from here on around, I think we're okay for a while and then we'll have to till some more on down there. The grade turned out to be 0.43%. We took 1.8 feet divided by 410 feet to, to determine that 0.43% slope. Right there is one of the reasons why it's nice to use a grading stick that is made for tenths of a foot rather than inches. It gets really difficult to calculate in inches. And if you're calculating in tenths of a foot or hundredths of a foot, it's a lot easier. It's an absolute dust bowl here. We haven't had rain now for a long time. A lot of rocks, a lot of rocks. Right now I can only use the laser controlled box blade with the 1025R. So it's a lot easier to use it with loose dirt rather than with sod and just compacted soil. So that's why I'm tilling this up first. The 1025R is really only marginally large enough for that box blade. It, it's a load for it and it would be better with the, the 2R or 3R. I'm planning to get the Summit kit for the 3R which should allow me to use the laser blade with it as well. We'll get to it eventually. I figured you'd decide to be downwind this time. We're a little bit behind on publishing some of these Move the Hump episodes. Please be patient with us. We've been mixing in some of the trade show videos and some other videos that we just felt like were important. So we'll have a couple more episodes on this project, stretching into the next few weeks, maybe even a month. The area in front of the tractor here is where we're going to have to fill. If we don't fill it in here, water will stand here in the winter, and 
Yeah, I don't want that. Now some of this needs a good bit of soil taken out, so I'm gonna actually run over it several times to make sure I've got it deep enough. That's some good black soil here. It's interesting, after no rain for I don't know, six, eight weeks now, it's still got moisture. Pretty amazing. You might ask why I'm always tilling the same direction here. Well, it's because of the wind. I don't want the dust in my face today. This is the swale we made last year. It worked pretty well. The dead grass you see on top is crab grass. It dies earlier in the season than uh, the, the good grass that we plant. We'll try to overseed that in the next few days, see if we can get a little better stand next year. Knock out some of that crab grass. And I should talk a little bit about this pipe sticking up here. We would call this stand pipe. It goes down to a drainage tile. Again, that's just a corrugated drainage pipe. You can see a sample of that drainage tile right there. It's got little slots in it to accept water into it. You're probably asking, why am I not going to put this swale right through that standpipe? Well, that's because that drainage line does not have sufficient capacity to handle all the water that, we, that we're dealing with here. So I'm going to try to use it for kind of an overflow. I actually want the main part of the water to go through the swale, and then if the water happens to get a little deeper, then it'll go to the standpipe. And with that approach, it'll, it'll hopefully keep from plugging that drain or getting it totally full. It's not plugged, it just gets totally overloaded and takes it sometimes two, three days to drain the water out of here if, if it's the only thing doing the draining. Okay, I'm calibrating my blade here. Same way I always do. I zero my laser here right when I've got the blade at the right height. Set one side of my blade here. And then I'll set the other side just like it. Rather than depend on the blade to be exactly level, I'm just going to measure these and set these the same height based off measurement. So it doesn't matter what that measurement is, it's just that I achieved the, the solid green line here. I measured the dis a particular distance, right, any, any, to, to any consistent point here, set the other one to the same height. I'm ready to go. Now, remember, we've got slope in our laser. I'm going to start pulling this way. We'll see how it goes. Now, one mistake I may have is I may have the laser too low such that I'm interfering with it. You're going to notice that this is not your typical marketing video. You're going to see a lot of the trial and error that I've gone through to make a complex system like this work and do what I need it to do. Yeah, I may have the laser set too low. What I mean by having the laser too low is that I have the beam so low that the tractor's in the way. I need to get probably the beam up high enough that it's not going to cause me any problem. For instance, right now we're getting no signal whatsoever on this one over here. There's really two problems. Yeah, the beam's too low, as I mentioned, but watch me discover the next one. Now, we won't have any trouble if I pull the other direction. It should be able to see it. That's right. If I'm driving away from the laser, then the tractor's not in the way. Unfortunately, I wanted to pull the soil left to right, downhill, as it were. Yeah, I realize there's not much slope here, but it is slightly downhill from left to right, and that's where I really wanted the excess soil. And even on a very tiny slope like this, it will pull easier to go downhill rather than uphill. But naturally, I'm being a little bit stubborn. Moving the laser is not trivial. After all, I have all that slope put in it. I'll have to do all that again. So I'm going to try everything I can to see if I can get it to work. Another area where I continue to experiment is the amount of weight I have on the blade. 
If you remember, I welded some weight brackets on the top of the blade, and now I have eight 70-pound weights attached to it, four on each side. The purpose of these weights is to make sure that the blade will cut when I ask it to cut. Yes, we typically use it in tilled soil, but as you can see in this scene, we did some cutting in soil that hadn't been disturbed. I'm glad that I've had this flexibility, but as I'm learning more and more, I don't really think I need them with these small tractors and with this laser system, and I'll explain a little bit more. First, I find that the cutting edge on this C5 manufacturing blade is pretty aggressive. Even the six-foot version without any weights allows me to cut into some of this really hard soil on the hump. Adding the weights makes it just too aggressive for these small tractors. I need a bigger tractor for this, really. I'm using this tractor because it's the only one I've got set up to do it. But if I'm moving this much dirt, it would be a lot nicer to have a bigger tractor. Now, the other aspect is that the blade moves too aggressively up and down with the laser when I add the weights. Since the blade's so eager to cut, if we just drop it down at surface level for just a moment, the blade will pull itself down and try to cut even deeper than what the laser wants it to cut. I'm discovering this is one of several factors contributing to all these waves. Let's see if I can grab onto that big rock and get it out of there. I think I'm going to have to raise that laser beam up. It's working a lot better. Just wasn't getting good visibility of the lasers. And notice that I took off all eight of the weights. They still fight each other a little bit. By they, I'm speaking of the tilt and the lift functions of the blade. One of the disadvantages of videoing every project and showing you guys the progress as we go is that it's a little bit hard to communicate the final results, the final uh, learning that I've made over these projects. Of course, as time goes along, you'll see some of the learning and practice, but it's really just hard to communicate that uh, succinctly and clearly as to what we have learned. One item that Randall and Tom have observed through these videos and through their experience with the blade at the church camp is the blade lifting the wheels too far off the ground. When the laser wants the blade to go down but the blade can't go down, the wheels will end up way up in the air. Then if there's a change in elevation, it takes the blade a long time to respond because it's got to work those wheels all the way down to the ground before it picks up the blade. And this next part is going to be hard to describe. If the lift wheel is all the way off the ground and the tilt wants to raise, it's not going to be able to because the tilt won't have enough travel to extend. Are you guys interested in this level of detail? If so, I could go through it visually and maybe help to explain what's going on. My summary on this is that we're competing with a $200,000 device, right? You've seen it on this channel. The 333G Deer Skid Steer Track Loader with all of the GPS blade. This blade from C5 Manufacturing, hydraulic kit from Summit Hydraulics, and the Canamec laser system in its entirety is about $7,000. So I'm absolutely thrilled with the functionality at this price point. I'm creating drainage here that I'm certain will not hold water. So for that trip, I actually turned the tilt off when I, when I, would, when I hit good, good grade, and I just turned it off automatic, left it on manual. And that's, that's pretty good to me. Now I've got the bottom of the swale exactly where I want it, so I'm gonna see what I can do with the sides here. This is the first time I've tried to do something like this, so it'll be all over the map here for just a moment. But stick with me. The right wheel on the blade is controlled by the right end laser, and that's the overall lift on the machine. So I'm letting the laser control that end, at least while I'm in the ditch there, and the tilt side I'm controlling manually. So what we should see is the right end of the blade here should be exactly at the same level as the flat part of the swale. The left end is controlled manually by me 
I'm trying to balance several things. I want to get the right angle. I think it looks best on the swale. I can't take any more than the tractor will pull. And yeah, I can't dig too deep at any one time for the same reason. Now I got her going. I'm doing the slope manually, and the right-hand side is the grade. That works pretty good. Well, this is, seems like a fairly decent swale to me with just a box blade. What I did was use it full width in the middle with both the tilt and the raise and lower on. Of course, they fight a little bit. We can talk some more about that at some point, but the two systems fight a little bit. Canamec is working on a system that has them all in one. But I can get by with this one. It's, it, it, what I was, did when I got really close was I just turned off the tilt and left it essentially flat. And that allowed it to, to handle that a lot better. Then up here on these sides, I could only go one direction, but I put my right side in the lower part and I would turn on the up and down, and then I would just manually control the tilt along here. And that, that worked pretty well. I, I suppose what I'm saying is I'm getting a little bit better at understanding how to use the system to its most effective way. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it takes a little time, but it's really neat. And when you get done, you know you have good grade. My neighbor just said that if you get it within an inch, God will take care of it himself because the water will just, will, will just take care of that dirt and, and get rid of any, any small changes. And I, and I get the point of that. I, I, I fully agree. But it's nice to kind of have it where, where you know you've got some slope. Well, we're going to have to do the rest of this tomorrow. It's getting dark. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground.